as I was saying, I love this new little camera I've got. The only problem is it has a tendency to eat the batteries in no time whatsoever. But um, it's strange because the, the, the other model I had had four battery ports. This has only got three. I think that's why it keeps eating the batteries up. And it's uh, everything's in 640. You know, the other one could do 1080, but I don't want to start buggering around with it till I'm sort of comfortable with editing. Anyway, this uh, it's a little bit of a cheat because I'm going to give it a, a um, 16 out of 17 straight away because I've eaten a lot of these over the years. Um, they're particularly tasty uh, with um, Rivitas. You know, anyone who's trying to diet and they want to eat something fibrous and energy in the morning if they've got a long shift or something, King Pot and uh, some Rivita or Cracker Bread's just as nice. Yeah, it's, um, it's probably my favourite of the pot noodles. The secret to a pot noodle is don't rip the lid off like so many stupid people do. You've got to keep it on a little bit loose, but <coughs> 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 a bit of mushroom went down the wrong hole. Um, if it's not, if it's undercooked, cooked, boiled. Um, then you put the lid right across, you see, you seal it, and then put something on top, like um, a book or something, to seal in the heat, because that will make the, the noodles softer. You, know, you don't get a tummy ache and go, ooh, I'm not eating one of them again. But um, they're very nice. Um, I think they're made with wheat. They're not egg noodle at all, they're, um, I, I sometimes have soy sauce in them, because they come with a little sachet of soy, <coughs> but since I'm going to bed I don't want to take anything too salty, because I sometimes wake up in the middle of the night, sort of go, <coughs> you know, and if I, I um, I don't want to think salty before I go to bed, that's why I avoid eating peanuts, because I get indigestion as well. Right, uh, what it's got in it. Hmm. Yeah, it's got mushrooms, sweet corn, um, sh sugars in it, which I'm surprised. Oh no, that's the sachet. Um, oh no, it has got sugar in it. Skimmed milk powder, salt, um, palm fat, uh, yeast powder, herbs, acid, citric acid, mushroom juice, concentrate, colouring. You know, it's it's not the the greatest food. I'll have to admit, it's a bit of a sort of lad's meal. Um, especially if you've been doing something like playing um, the new um, Metal Gear game. You know, you're a bit peckish, you wanna, you're going to be going to bed soon. You don't want anything that's too heavy in you. Um, this is actually quite good. Mm. And because the, the way the no noodles are processed, you don't get all of the soup going to the bottom like those other ones. The um, um, I can't remember what they're called. The swanky noodles. Uh, this is sort of like your working class noodle. I wonder if they're still, are they still made by. No, it doesn't say. They used to be made by Golden Wonder, who were like sort of um, a crisp firm, but then they made loads of crisps that were really weird flavours. I can't 
can't remember what they were called. There were these ones that looked like, um, I think they were called Twiglets or something like that. No, they were a different thing there with the bovroy taste in it. I can't remember what they were called. They were orange and they were like a sort of deformed what's it. And we used to have them at school and they were really cheap. They were like about 10p a bag. And it was full of E numbers. You look on the back and it was literally like a chemical formula. It was, and they were like puff wheat. But they were really strong tastes like barbecue flavour and curry flavour and things like that. And they were so colour filled they were almost translucent. You know, I expected them to glow in the dark. Yeah, I remember eating pot noodles from my teen years mainly. The reason when I first saw them on the telly, mm -hmm. they were quite expensive. You know, because my mum was a single parent, she couldn't be constantly buying me frippery. But then when I sort of hit the fourth and fifth year, um, they'd come down in price. So my mum would get me a pot noodle occasionally for taking to school, especially when I was in the sixth form. I ate a lot of them when I was at um, Wyvale, which was my cr crappy job before I got proper jobs. Uh, gave me a life lesson, never worked for an American firm. Because it was literally a bureaucratic machine. You'd have to fax off sheets about everything. You couldn't even take the broom off the, the... They sold brooms. If the broom was broken, you'd literally have to fill out something like that of paperwork to take one off the shelf. Bloody ridiculous. I even said when I resigned, I said, what idiot decided to build a garden centre on a hill? Because it used to rain, it used to flood the, at the entrance. I was like, that's a brilliant move. I occasionally had to vacuum it in the day, and it had a nylon carpet. I don't know why it had a nylon carpet, because it didn't help when uh, the roof leaked, because it would literally sit on the floor of the wall, so it wouldn't dry up or anything. So you'd be vacuuming, and if I, the whole structure was made of metal, if I so much went near it, big blue spark of static would come out of me into the bloody superstructure. I hated that place run by a young conservative twonk. I remember in the staff room he put up the New Labour, New Danger poster and he got all upset because I wrote underneath it in Tipex, Old Tories, Old Bollocks. Yeah. That's back before I, I realised that there wasn't really much difference between New Labour and the Tory party. Just different labelling. Still, I have got a leaning towards um, the Labour party again now. Jeremy Corbyn's in charge, but I'm still more sort of focused on um, the Green party. You know, I, I, I'd I like to see a coalition, that would be brilliant, but um, can't keep going this industrial route for progress that's basically ruining the atmosphere and, you know, one day, won't be in my generation, but uh, it will be in my nephew and niece's generations, by the time they reach m my age, they're really going to start suffering because of the global problems such as overpopulation, 
um, the raising sea levels, the freezing winters, the boiling summers. You know, especially if they have children as well. It's going to be a very rough world that uh, my grandchildren inherit. Well, not my grandchildren. I'd be the, their uncle or great uncle or whatever. It's funny, I've had a recurring dream when I can actually predict which year I'm going to die. It's really weird. It appears in a dream I've had since probably about 15, a recurring one. And I'm on my last day of life and it is um, 2097. And it's around, I think, May or June and I'm looking out the window in a, a sort of hospice. And I'm super old. I'm sort of like Davros the old. You know, um, all hung over and s s stooped and big ears and all my teeth are gone. I'm in a wheelchair and I'm literally sort of counting the hours type thing. I think most old people probably die of boredom. You know, um, when you've lived too long, you get very bored with um, the world as it is. a nice day out today. I went to the Brooklands with my uncle. I'll probably out, um, that'll be in my video section. Went and saw some, um, went, because Brooklands has got the Mercedes factory place, um, test place, right next to it, we were going around to look at the World War One vehicles uh, and they had um, the uh, McLaren Mercedes ones doing all these funny skids on big skid plane and uh, then we went inside and had a look about I'm definitely considering when I get my driver's license to get a smart car because the low emissions won't make me feel guilty the, um, the road tax is super cheap I wouldn't have to pay congestion charge if I drive into London. Um, you know, it's and it's not a ridiculously fast car either. Um, that's the one thing that I worry the most about driving if I lost control and hit something. Sixteen out of seventeen. The only criticism I have about the pot noodles are the sachets that they use for soy sauce are the same size whether it's a king pot or a regular and it's not really enough. Really they could do one of those funny little bottles you get with um, a sushi platter at um, Boots. It's like a little bottle about that big but it's just enough to add an right amount of taste to it. Mm. Right. Sometimes at work um, I give them about 10p or something. The people in the coffee shop once or twice have given me hot water forever and pot noodles, especially when it's really cold weather. You know, um, I give them 10p. Actually sometimes they've given it me hot water for nothing but I don't like being a burden on people. Well, apart from the state. <laughs> but I pay tax, so it's not really a burden at all. It's literally I've paid for myself at periods when I haven't had to rely on the state. It's like um, C 
soon I may may be leaving my job. Um, I've got a feeling that possibly I will because um, hopefully they'll make me redundant and I'll get at the minimum ten thousand. Um, you know, I, I I like my job, but it's been so bad with everything else in my life. Um, the shifts have restricted my uh, relationships. I I I've, I've, I'm going to be forty in about a year and a half, and over the past fifteen years, I've had like one girlfriend. So. Um, yeah, and that didn't last. I s sort of had another girlfriend, but it never got really sort of um, didn't last long enough. And I, I've met lots of girls, but the problem is that um, I never had the time with my shifts. <laughs> the sixty-eight hours, including travel time. I'm usually too exhausted on my days off, so I don't go out on my days off. Or, I've worked an extra day, and I've got a day between shifts. I can't go out, because um, it, it would screw up my sleep pattern, because I've got to switch from an early shift to a late shift. Or, the other way round sometimes, a late shift to an early shift. And, uh, it's just too much now. Well, I'd, I'd like to do a job, but something I want to do, not that I've had to do because of I needed the money to pay for my rent and all this other stuff. <sighs> Just It feels too much, you know. I want to do other things. I want to do a media studies course and make really good videos. And uh, I want to study carpentry and be able to make furniture and buildings out of wood because I've always had a, a yearning to do that. And even do art as well. It's, art's the last of the list of things I need to do. I need to get a driver's license first, then um, study media studies, then the carpentry, then the art. But I want to get there by the age of 50. I want to feel like I've achieved something. But I haven't just been going through the motions again and again and again with boring jobs where I don't feel like I've actually done anything. And that's the worst thing about cleaning, that you have this feeling like of no achievement. Literally, you feel like just a cog in the works that could easily be replaced at any time it's just um, it's quite a miserable existence and I've had that miserable existence and it took me a long time to realise how miserable it was um, to wake up to my own problems um, my dad being ill has sort of magnified my problems and eventually I got suspended but um, that woke me up to the fact that I was really really miserable I, I, I hadn't had um, a happy working experience for like nearly a year and a half um, I didn't really feel needed either and uh, I felt a little bit abandoned and um, but it, it happens when you get into a rut that you, you, you don't want to move because you're too tired or it would be too much hassle or, or you feel like there's going to be nothing out there beyond what you're doing mm. it was a quite interesting today I was in um, Sainsbury's with my uncle when a mate of his who's a member of the Labour Party and we were drinking coffee in the Starbucks I was looking around and seeing all these people just being people 
Um, and that's what I want. I want to be able to um, have a job where I do eight hours, but I'm not exhausted, and I can go out and I can go and meet people and talk to people and join a cinema club, and find a girlfriend. I'm just tired of being who I am at the moment. Anyway, enough of that. I give the King Pot uh, 16 out of 17. Tomorrow, um, I might do another. I, I, I'll probably do the beef one because I'm trying to put off the curry one till it's the last one because uh, the curry is a bit. Uh, not the worst though, the sweet and sour ones were really <laughs> if you ever come across a pot noodle and the labelling is blue don't touch it if you value your taste buds because the sweet and sour one is, I've only met about three people ever who like the sweet and sour and they're all heavy drinkers and you know, you've got six pints of lager in you you'll eat anything that's why kebab fans are open in the evening just uh, yeah yeah it's it's nasty I was quite fortunate that Tesco's don't, don't sell them so uh, um, I'm free of the, the sweet and sour where it's mostly sour and too sweet uh, yeah anyway Chicken and mushroom, really good. Probably my favourite um, quick meal thing. You know, um, and like I said, these are very good if you're working out in the open, you're cold, you're a little bit miserable, you need something to warm you through. The taste is not bad, even if it repeats on you, it's not a, it's not a severe flavour. Um, basically, of the, the noodles you'll come across, the easiest will be these. They usually sell them in paper shops and supermarkets and all sorts of places. I've even seen them sold in an airport. Anyway, I'll see you later. Uh, bye bye.